jungfer red ved juletid. Ting, tang, ting, du til dig. Og bring ham dannet sneen hvid. Ting, tang, ting, du til dig. Welcome to this week in our collective heads, and welcome to Totes, the topic of the episode show. I'm Patrick. I'm Kevin. And we're here giving you the topic of the week, and uh, we give you a topic every single week to talk for you to talk to us about, and then we kind of mull through it and, and talk amongst ourselves about it. And this week's topic is uh, God of War versus Darksiders. Um, as, as far as lore goes, yes. and the, the adaption thereof. Yes. So uh, this this was kind of an idea that I had. We haven't really done like a one versus another on totes before yeah. and so I, th- I thought that would be fun so uh i am the god of war i am war the of the horse, dark siders <laughs> all right i'm war the of the four horsemen so um, we're, we're going to be talking about the lore and the mythos yeah. and, and pulling from various sources to to create something new mm-hmm. so the reason that i am better than you is because my my lore is fairly canon. Mm-hmm. It has been adapted where necessary, mm-hmm. as far as as far as needing to make it interesting as a video game. But we stayed within canon for the most part, yeah. except when it was necessary to make the game more fun. Mm-hmm. You just reinvented the four horsemen. You you changed their names. You you twisted everything around to fit your your ends. Mm-hmm. So why even bother? with pulling from another mythos. I think that's I think that that the reason that we chose to uh, take and adapt is to give uh, to give the four horsemen something that was uh, that was retro and also uh, works in recent in, in uh, recent time and in a, in a recent uh, framework because mythos and religion are adaptive. I mean the Christmas tree is a pagan symbol that was taken Easter is from Estes I mean there's religion and and and, and Santa everything. Claus is half Odin it but is. anyway but and and at a, and in the going within the Christian cr- tradition we chose to uh, take out half of the stuff that was originally Canon grab some other stuff go with whatever was close and and run with it and we got a hot redhead too Referencing what Christianity actually does is a pretty solid point in your in in your camp. I'm, it, it's I, I will, solid. I will agree with that. Yeah. However, the reason that these that these that these myths that mm-hmm. these mythologies these these set of creeds have retained so much value is that the inherent the inherent properties of these characters yeah. are universal. They are in, ti- they are timeless in both in in both. Yeah. And so, so the idea of, of taking the titans versus the gods versus humanity and, and the alliances that form within those systems are, are important. And there's, there's really not a need to adapt it. Yeah. What, what you have there is, is sufficient. And as far as Christianity goes and, and the, the four horsemen mm-hmm. and everything, you can't tell me the the pestilence famine war and death mm-hmm. were not adaptable enough to fit your means uh, i think they were adaptable we decided to to change it up uh, a bit and and i don't think that it uh, i don't think that it was bad and now we still have pestilence and others that we can use in, in other ways um and in in any way we're, we're talking about you know someone uh moving around and changing things you guys in the first game killed all the gods and then decided we killed a lot of the gods right. that's different zeus is dead all these other people are dead zeus didn't die in the so first one. we're just we're just we gonna killed go, Ares. killed Ares. we're just gonna go back we're gonna kill him what three times in this series twice um so i would say the continuity in regards to the, the god of war games we introduced time travel through continuity <laughs> is fine we have a device. as long as you follow only Kratos' timeline. Then, then it all makes sense. Exactly. Meanwhile, the Darksiders games, the first game takes place... Uh, so the second t- game takes place pretty much at the same time as the first game, uh, where you are trying to absolve uh, your your brother of the things that he did not do. Right. And now the third game that's coming out, which is going to be quasi-prequel to that, continuing hmm, Time to, travel. How about that? Not a time travel, though, because no one went back in time. We're just telling the story out of time. Pulp Fiction style. 
you like Pulp Fiction. Yeah. We're just um, going to go back and enhance that lore and just keep it going. One of the things that I really enjoyed about about the God of War series, about about me, mm-hmm. the God of War series, yeah. is that um, the, the canon was much more established yeah like the the idea and the the time sequence of the the titans versus the gods versus humanity and how all that interplayed Mm -hmm. i feel like the 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 greek mythology gave us a lot more to work with Mm -hmm. as far as that's concerned the 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 four horsemen are just kind of vaguely mentioned as they went out and and (laughs) effed stuff up yeah Whereas, whereas the there is there is a timeline there is a story yeah that that the god of war that the God of War series was allowed to work with it. Agreed. Whereas the Darksiders is is taking more concepts. Yeah. Um, and and I, I really appreciate how how we, the God of War series, mm-hmm. um, stuck with those those time sequences. Mm-hmm. Like we we were allowed to to manipulate them, to change them, yeah. to introduce new elements to them. But the timeline as as it was laid out mm-hmm. for for the series, for the mythos, however you want to put yeah. it, um, that was fairly established. Yeah. And and they stayed within that. Mm-hmm. Where when it comes to uh, the Titans attacking uh, the gods, the the conflict of the Titans versus the gods, the Titans being enslaved by the gods, all all of that, and and like there are there are several really interesting and 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 fun mm-hmm. concepts where uh, a creature from the gods will attack, and it will be so massive mm-hmm. that the sheer scale of mm-hmm. these creatures yeah. forces you to to go inside them, to climb up them. And, and it's, it's, it's one of the best implementations of quick time events mm-hmm. because it allows the, the scope and scale of these mm-hmm. battles to really come in. Like, I agree. Um, at the beginning of God of War 3, when you're climbing a titan to reach... A crest mm-hmm. to reach Poseidon, mm-hmm. and then you 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 hit her in the arm <laughs> and you take off her arm to reach your destination. When you could have just said, "Hey, guy, could you move your arm?" I mean, let, let's be honest, Kratos is kind of a he, yeah. he's kind of a douche. Yeah, yeah, but you also have a lot looser controls in regards to in in regards to your games. Dark Siders has a lot more tight controls, and it's getting tighter. As the games are, are going on, uh, the scalability is still there when it comes to to Dark uh, but you don't have these uh, weird leaps. As well as uh, I would say, God of War uh, got better with time, like a good wine. If you go back and play the first God of War, it's it's a little clunky. If you go back and play Dark Siders, not too bad. Whitney's recently playing, going back and playing God of War. But God of War mm-hmm. Two is the pinnacle of the series. God of War Two is the opinion. pinnacle. Of the I, would, I would agree with that. <laughs> so, so that. your argument only works through one game. Yes. And part of that is because God of War One was meant to be a standalone, mm-hmm. and then they were like, "Oh, how about that? People like the power of a god inside the frame of a human. Mm-hmm. How about that?" I will say. Uh, within our argument and everything uh, outside of the argument that god of war started us down this path of the the action rpg that um that so many others have uh, have have taken and dark as being one of them uh i would say that don is inferno um which too many people passed on thinking it was a god of war clone because it yeah. kind of is uh that's a great game uh well the the devil may cry series devil was cry. was a precursor to god of war but i think god of war does it better yeah and i well, uh, kind of a lot of these games in regards to themes in regards to combat um, uh, I'd even throw Bayonetta into it uh, in regards to again talking about the Christian theme uh, themes right. really playing around with it because the framework of the of the uh, God of War and the the uh, Greek mythos we, we have so much that's defined and if you talk about a specific yeah. uh, uh, God or, uh, or or character People kind of know the story, and they know a lot about who they are and what they do. And but though if, they might think that you're talking about the Marvel versions, and that no, can sure, get confusing sure. real quick. Yeah, uh, but I think that the uh, that when we see these Christian adaptations of it, it actually gets more uh, open and interpretive, like in Bayonetta, where you are uh, technically just killing angels constantly. And like you do, like you do, but but the the idea of uh, of being to pl- being able to play a little bit more in 
in that religion versus the uh, the other religion, uh, newer versus older uh, religions, I think is, is interesting. And I think that's one thing that uh, we continue to see uh, developers kind of working around, which I think is I think is really cool. So no matter which one you think is better, I like that we get to we get to talk about um, uh, these uh, these themes. We get to talk about these uh, these characters, uh, and we don't in in a non indoctrination form. We yeah. can do we can do a a uh, which I, I would like to see more. Uh, in regards to the the Christian and, and Muslim religions and everything, if you can have a game uh, taking place in in uh, in uh, the story frame without being indoctrinated, kind of how God of War or others can do uh, with that, because there's ways to do it. And um, yeah. I mean, uh, what was it? Um, Asura's Wrath. Um, a lot of Asura's Wrath was taken from Hindu religion. Right. So right, right. it's like there are a lot of these interesting story bits and themes that you can explore uh, without beating it up in the head. Yeah. Uh, with you know, and and it allows you to to see it more objectively. Mm -hmm. um, and in that note, uh, I'll go ahead and break character here. We I, yeah, I feel yeah, like we've, yeah. we've established that. But I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, our YouTube. Uh, channel of the week, which for this week is going to be Crash Course Mythology. Um, if you, if you look up Crash Course, they have they have many different series. They have Crash Course Computing, Psychology, Physics. Um, but the the one that I find the most interesting is Crash Course Mythology. Yeah. And what it does is it is it takes and defines the the story of a lot of different mythologies. Some of which I was familiar with, some of which I wasn't, and and compares and contrasts the different ways that that ancient peoples mm. decided and determined how their world came about and how that in turn shaped their philosophy yeah. and was reflective of their philosophy yeah. at the time. And so I encourage you to check out uh, Crash Course Philosophy, or Crash Course Mythology rather, and, and look into that series, find out a bit, bit of history and, and find out the similarities between the groups. Because let's be honest, God of War and Darksiders they're different takes on on similar themes. They're yeah. taking taking mythology, turning it into an action RPG, and letting us beat the crap out of some giant mm -hmm. powerful creatures. And now we get to go into the Norse mythology with it. So excited about that! Uh, excited about Dark Siders three. So whichever camp you're in, we got some great games coming out. So Indeed. have fun.